Welcome into the door of psychic experience. Ask and you will be given what you ask for. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks receives. Anyone who seeks finds. If only you will knock, the door will open. And the truth within your higher spiritual self will be revealed to you. Come now with us and go where angels come and you can too. Hello, welcome to Psychic Experience. Thank you for tuning in. This is a metaphysical spiritual talk show. It's being presented by the First Spiritualist Church in the City Heights area of San Diego, where angels come and so can you any Sunday morning. And the show is where you can find angelic persons. And we have very gifted people that come on our show as our guests. And our church is really a place for healing, for great lessons to learn how to develop your higher self and your spiritual life. We have our own resident angels. I'm the pastor, Reverend Doris Horvath, and I have an assistant pastor, Reverend Marcella Jones, who is a master in Ewan Method Teachings, and I also have a minister of healing, Reverend Celine Clark, and we have a Reiki master, Rosalia Oberlees. She's a reverend, too. And we have wonderful classes. I can't tell you about all that today, but you can call our church, and our line is always open that you can find out how to call me or to find out questions about our guests. Today we have a guest by the name of Paula Shaw. She is going to be talking with me very soon here. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about her before we get into the show. And so that you can get some wisdom here on what she does. She is a counselor with a private practice in South Pasadena and Solana Beach. And she lectures, writes, and teaches a variety of workshops within her fields of expertise. She's a graduate of Long Beach State University with postgraduate training in Lolola, Marymount University. In 1999, Paula developed an energy psychology system called Conscious Healing and Repatterning Therapy, which is like a chart which was introduced at the International Energy Psychology Conference 2000 and has been presented as a subsequent conference. And in 2001, 2001, Paul presented chart at the first European Energy Psychology Conference in Switzerland and the following year presented it at Oxford University in England. In 2002, she completed her book, Chakras, and I'd like her to just sort of hold the book up right now so you can get a look at it so our camera person can zoom in on it and get a look at what it looks like. Close her up if possible here. And it introduces the reader to unique aspects of the chakras and explains simple yet effective ways to work with them on a daily basis to clear the effects of traumatic experiences and to create and maintain optimum health. For more information about her work, just keep tuned and we're going to talk about what she does. She also has done some research based on Masaru Emoto, these on the body temporary tattoos and labels, pitpazi words and affirmations directly on the body to affect the energetic frequency of the water within. Now I'm going to be asking Paula some questions. Would you like to say just a real quick hello to the audience? Yes, hello. It's so nice to be here tonight. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me, Reverend Doris. Well, I'm very happy that you're able to do this because you certainly have a lot to do already. <laughs> <laughs> I am busy. <laughs> yes. Well, this is a wonderful book and She's had some real good breakthrough working with her clients and she has been focusing on helping people lead successful lives by quickly identifying and eliminating self-sabotaging behaviors 
and limiting beliefs. She applies proven energy, psychology, strategies, and working with the chakras, meridians, and the bio field to uh, dissolve and eliminate unwanted energy patterns. Now, I'm going to ask you a few questions. <laughs> I don't want to do what all the talking. What does all that mean? <laughs> uh, Paula, would you like to tell us a little bit about this book that you brought with you today, The Magnificent Seven? Yes. Um, when I was developing CHART, which is the acronym for Conscious Healing and Repatterning Therapy, which is the system that I developed within the field of energy mm -hmm. psychology, I started working with the chakras. It occurred to me that the chakras, which are vortexes of energy, were, had actually become for people holding centers for traumatic experience. And um, in my work, I found that there were so many ways that we could work with the chakras. I mean, it, originally the chakras, and the very word comes from the Sanskrit tradition, and which means uh, wheel or disc, because the chakras are like these whirling uh, vortexes of energy in certain parts of the body. There are seven major chakras uh, many people are familiar with, but I'll tell you what they are. The crown at the top of the head, which is about our connection to spirit the brow chakra, which is about intuition and intellect. The throat chakra has to do with will, with communication, and with um, issues of will between our will and divine will. The um, heart chakra is our feeling experience. The solar plexus here at the stomach is um, concerned with the self. And the sacral chakra at the abdomen creation, uh, pleasure, uh, relationships. And then finally, at the tip of the spine, the root chakra, which is about our foundation, our grounding, our ability to survive on our own and to stand on our own two feet on the planet. Hey now, can you tell me what energy psychology is? Yes. <laughs> energy psychology is a branch of psychology that goes beyond just talk therapy. There, of course, is talking involved. The whole idea is to bring issues to the surface, and then we work with them on the levels of the energy system, the biofield or aura, the chakras, which we just talked about, and then the meridians, which are, they run almost like veins through the body, and they carry energy in, in flows through the body in predictable patterns. That is actually the system that's worked with in mm -hmm. acupuncture mm -hmm. and um, things of that nature. The meridians are very powerful. We use a lot of different methods to work with the energy system. Some of them are tapping rather than putting needles into those points, tapping them, holding them. There are different ways to actually work with shifting the energy within given points in the meridian system. Mm -hmm. And how does the energy psychology work? Well, it's, it's actually mm -hmm. very powerful work. And what I'm so excited about in the energy psychology work is that it gives people tools to be able to work on issues themselves in between sessions. They don't become therapist dependent. They, uh, mm -hmm. they have mm -hmm. a way to deal with things, to shift the energy themselves when life happens as it does. You know, there's mm -hmm. much more to life than that one hour mm -hmm. a week, perhaps, that you spend with your therapist. My goal in working with people is to give them tools to empower them so that they have the ability to work on issues in their lives when they're out there in the real world living every day. Oh, can you tell me how it differs from the more traditional forms of therapy? I think the major difference is just in that we, we don't just talk about issues. Of course, therapy has many, many tools. Some people use visualization, some use hypnotherapy, uh, writing, uh, lots of tools are really good in therapy, but primarily most therapy is, is conducted through talk. And in the energy psychology work, there's always then the action step where we will intervene on that energy system, either, as I mentioned, by tapping on meridians, perhaps holding chakras, using visualization, using sound. There are many ways that we work. Breath is a powerful way to shift energy. So we work with those 
aspects of the energy system to shift the electromagnetic frequencies that are actually what hold it all in place because as we're all pretty familiar with today it's all energy. Well, what do you think blocks most people from having what they really want in their lives? I think the major blocks that people have are primarily created by their limiting beliefs and traumatic experience that gets stored within the electromagnetic circuitry of the mind. These limiting beliefs have a kind of attractor factor. So if you can think of it almost as like a magnet that's within you, this magnet is busy attracting and it may not be attracting what you want. In most cases it isn't. It's attracting um, that which is like it. So if I believe that I am not worthy of good things happening to me, what I am then attracting are those things that are not good things. My attractor factor is going to attract something like itself. Well, how are these blocks actually created to start with? Most of the time they're created in childhood. They can happen through a variety of, of means. Traumatic experience, like even a natural disaster can create uh, a traumatic experience that forms a problematic energy block. Um, beliefs uh, evolve out of that and also the um, experiences that we have. If we have parents that fight all the time or that never affirm us, that never support us or seem to believe in us, then we begin to believe things like I'm not worthy or I don't matter or something's wrong with me, I'm defective, uh, I'm not okay. I understand you have developed a system for clearing blocks that people have a system uh, that you call the chart. Mm -hmm. What is a chart and how does the chart work? Chart is, um, as I mentioned, an acronym for conscious healing and repatterning therapy. And primarily chart is kind of wonderful because it works with a keyword that is um, implanted, if you will, into the subconscious mind. So if I had an issue, like for example, if I were feeling really anxious right now, nervous to be here, I could focus on that anxiety and say my key word in my mind silently so you would never even know that I was doing it, <laughs> and it would help me to clear that anxiety. If I were working with another method, like perhaps a tapping method, it would be a little bit more difficult because as I was sitting here being nervous, if I started doing something like this, you would probably find me a bit of an odd guest. But that <laughs> is a way that we do work with it. But chart is kind of wonderful in that it's a keyword, so you can say it silently or out loud, and it does shift the energetic frequencies that hold that block or that condition in, in place. Well, then what kind of results are you getting then with your process? You know, it's amazing the, the wonderful results that we are getting in the whole field of energy psychology. The primary um, real advantage of energy psychology work is that it's rapid. The results are rapid. I have literally seen presentations where someone who was afraid of heights was intervened with uh, in, a, in a demonstration they did perhaps a tapping method or my method or another method and literally left that room and went and got in a glass elevator and went up 30 floors. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is your philosophical perspective about working with clients then? I like to think of myself as a guide, as a companion on this journey. Um, Carl Rogers had the perspective that Everybody has within them everything they need to heal. And I really support that. I think we all have everything we need to self-actualize, to heal, to become our best selves. But we need oftentimes guidance. You know, we need someone to light the way on that path as we're hacking our way through the jungle. And I think of myself as that guide. Okay, well, then how will you approach your approach, your type approach benefit people? How does it benefit them? I think, I think the primary benefit is, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, I give them tools so that they have a sense of empowerment, so that they really have something that they walk out the door with that they can use in their lives. Um, they don't need to call me the minute something goes wrong because they have tools to fall back on. 
I think it creates in them a greater sense of self-esteem, a greater sense of having control in their lives, and, and um, just a, a definitely a sense of being more powerful and being able to attain that result more quickly. I really think the, the idea of being on the couch for 20 years, so to speak, is, <laughs> is passe. <laughs> well, then what kind of um, issues respond the best or the most effectively to this type of approach that you're using? You know, initially a lot of what I learned in my training was working with a lot of present moment kinds of things. Anxiety responds beautifully to energy psychology work. Depression. Uh, there have been studies done where they used EFT, which is a, a tapping um, method where you tap meridian points, and the results were as effective as Prozac with less side effects. And other things were also cleared along the way. So the results, the uh, uh, impact that people are having is, are really wonderful, powerful, and, and lives transform very quickly. I have a client I was just uh, talking with the other day, and oh, a month ago, this woman was, was kind of paralyzed. She just could not go forward in her life, and she was feeling a, a high level of depression and, and a kind of numbness even. And she was looking at me the other day, just sitting there glowing, talking about all the things she had done that week, the vacation her husband and she are taking, this new thing she's doing with this room in her home, and she was transformed, and it all happened very quickly. Well, I know from what we are talking about before that you're very much uh, in accord with the chakra system. So could you tell us a little bit about what a chakra is and how you are using the system and working with your own clients? Yes. As I mentioned, chakras are vortexes of energy, and they're important in many ways. Each chakra has a kind of personality of its own, and chakras impact us on the physical level, the emotional, the spiritual, and the mental level. Each chakra has impact on different parts of the body, on different emotions, uh, on different aspects of our lives. As I mentioned when I was describing them, you know, they have their different areas of impact. When I work with chakras, uh, sometimes I will have people put their hands on the chakra, visualize the color that's associated with that chakra, and then repeat several times the belief or the issue that they want to clear. For example, the solar plexus chakra, as I mentioned, is associated with the self. So if I were really feeling a lack of confidence, um, perhaps the belief underneath that, I look for the belief that comes, that's supporting that outcome. So the belief underneath that might be, um, I'm not worthy of, of anything good, or I might believe I'm not smart enough, or I'm not pretty enough. And if I want to go forward in my life in a more powerful way, I need to shift that belief. I need to get rid of it, so to speak. So I might have my hands here on the chakra that supports that and, and repeat several times, perhaps my word, my key word, which we have in chart, or the belief that I want to get rid of and maybe visualize it just turning into sparkles of light and going away, or, you know, um, visualizing the color of the chakra, just kind of melting it away, washing it away. It's amazing how powerful it can be. I'm really interested in something that you've talked about before because of the fact that our church is a spiritualist church. Of course, I'd be interested in finding out uh, how do you work with grief as a grief therapist? Mm. What is your approach to grief therapy? Originally, um, when I first started the grief support group that I created called Beyond Loss, I was working in more traditional ways, but what I didn't even realize at the time was that the, the most powerful healing method that I was using was a process where the, um, the participants would write a letter, and this letter had four major areas to it. And the letter was to the person that they had lost. Um, sometimes this might be an animal. Animal loss is a really huge um, 
problematic area that's so unaddressed in our society. You know, people who lose their animals are often just as grief-stricken as people who lose a family member, a human family member, and they're not very well supported out there. You know, people who don't know that experience of loving an animal that way will often say, you know, get another one. And that's a very difficult position for a, a griever to, um, to be faced with. But you can use the, these methods I've described because grief, again, it's like an energetic circumstance. You can use t tapping, meridian points. You can use visualization. You can use um, uh, visualizing light coming in, filling the heart, uh, connection with that person. You know, we do a lot of that kind of thing that really assists a great deal in, uh, in helping people reconcile their grief issues. Well, isn't it true you started out with grief counseling for children? And if that's so, uh, what are the other ages of people that you work with for grief? The original work was with children, and uh, it was a program that I developed called Kids in Crisis. And I was actually training school personnel to deal with children um, who were suffering any kind of emotional crisis. This could have been anything from an earthquake that traumatized them to a family member's death or a parent's divorce or that kind of thing. And um, one thing that's wonderful about working with children, especially with these energy psychology methods, they shift so quickly because they're so pure. You know, they don't have years of negative experience and years of carrying those limiting beliefs around like we do as adults. So children, if they're talked to, if they're listened to, if they are supported in the feelings that they have, can heal very rapidly. But grief is very confusing for them. None of us gets a class on, you know, how to grieve. So it's really confusing for all of us. But children especially have no idea how to handle it. And the ways of working with them re can really be simple but profound. And they are, they're anxious to heal. They're young and they're ready to approach life in a beautiful, joyful way. And if we give them the tools, they, they will take care of it. Now, do you do workshops at all? I do. I, I enjoy workshops very much. I love the teaching. I love uh, doing trainings. I do trainings in chart. I teach people how to work with the method themselves. I work with professionals to teach them how to do it so that they can use chart with their clients. Uh, grief workshops, I, I certainly do. And in, from both ends, teaching people how to work with grievers and also with people who are grieving. I like to approach that as more of a class because I think that if people just come together every week and sit and talk about their, their sadness and their grief issues, it can almost become an illness group. I think it's really important to have focus, to have um, a, a point to which you're going, to give people knowledge to help empower them to move through the grief because we don't want to get stuck there. That can become another one of those areas of blocks that's really problematic. Well, one of these days I'm probably going to be asking you if you like to do a workshop for our church. <laughs> I would love to. Okay. I would love to. Well, going back to grief for animals, I had an experience. I had a cat. His name was Snowflake. He lived to be 18 years old. Mm. And he is a beautiful white Siamese with blue eyes. Oh. He was absolutely precious. When he gave up the ghost, so to speak, when mm -hmm. he was ready to go into the cat spirit land, and he went, I cried for about two weeks. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it was worse than anything I'd ever experienced because he was like my, my little baby. Mm -hmm. It was well, really hard. Animals, in my opinion, are the closest experience that we ever have to unconditional love. Yes. They're always there. They're always loving us no matter what. He was with me when I moved to six different houses. Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> my dog has been with me through the same thing. <laughs> oh, what an experience yes. that was. Oh. I did get another cat, but it just didn't work out. It wasn't the same cat, so mm -hmm. I don't know if I'll ever have another cat now. 
Well, and you experienced what a lot of people experience. If you go too quickly to replacing that animal I and do. don't have time to really work through the grief, no matter how wonderful the second one is, it often just doesn't work out. No, it doesn't. So I feel better you told me that. <laughs> I See, that's what I think is part of the problem. Most people don't realize that we are entitled to that grief no matter what it is that we're grieving. Oh, I believe it. Or who. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I'm sure that you've helped a lot of people with what you've been talking about. And I want to thank you for coming. And I want to thank you ahead of time for offering to do a workshop for our <laughs> church one of these days. I don't know when yet but we will find a time. I want to thank all of our crew members who've worked so hard tonight to come here and take a part in all of this. And remember the First Spiritual Church is where angels come. You can too. Any Sunday, we're always there. And we are a church that makes you feel better when you step in the door. And we have a lot of magical things happen. It's wonderful. God bless, and thank you so much for watching. Bye for now. Thank you.